I'm going to be talking to Grant Ray, who is the VP Global Market Strategies for Group 14 Technologies Company located in Seattle. It has uh, just recently raised $400 million from a group of investors, including a Porsche, uh, Porsche. And it has some uh, very, very interesting battery technology. They claim 50% improvement in energy density and range over traditional or conventional lithium ion battery technology. So I'm very interested in having this conversation. Welcome to the interview, Grant. Uh, thanks for having me, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, look, I, a lot of our viewers are, you know, they're really tuned into batteries. And so they want to know how your lithium silicon uh, battery technology works and, and, and sort of back up the claim of 50% improvement in performance. Well, it's, uh, it's a fantastic question. It's really about being able to, um, to being able to utilize silicon in a traditional cell like what we would use right now whether that's, you know, a pouch or a cylindrical or, um, you know, some people are using even prismatic. Um, and it's really about displacing some of the material that's traditionally used in lithium ion and just doing a drop and swap for the material that we're creating and, and manufacturing here in, in the Seattle area, which is, uh, it's a silicon carbon composite that we're calling SEC 55. And it's being able to use silicon safely and and with without all the the drawbacks that silicon has been known for uh, that's allowing us to do this by being able to you know turn it into a, a kind of composite between both silicon and carbon so what are we talking about here are we talking about anodes um i, I think you would traditionally talk about replacing graphite with that so yes because you know, when you've got a lithium ion battery, you, you've got your chemicals that most people know about, like the NMCs or whatever, but uh, we're on the other side, we're on the, the graphite side, which actually takes up more than half the battery. So if you can swap that out for something that packs in, you know, five times capacity, the capability of graphite, you've got some uh, some real performance increase. And some but real I'm coming with that. Right, and I would assume that silicon is, is much more plentiful and lower cost than graphite. Uh, it is far, far more plentiful, and it's definitely something that you know we've taken into into great consideration because, um, as we know right now, what's happening with all of the supply challenges that we have uh, that are happening globally. Um, when you when you think about graphite, it only comes from you know two specific you know regions in in East Asia for the entire lithium ion supply chain. So if we're able to break free of that constraint we can radically shift what happens with supply chain constraints and we can open up how we can think about domestic supply for, for batteries. No, I would assume the fact that the, you know, Porsche is coming to the table and these other investors are coming to the table, that's a significant raise for you guys. And, and I would assume then that this, this means that your technology is now is, uh, is commercially viable. You're ready to scale up. Is that, would that be a fair assumption? Um, well, we actually, we, we're definitely commercially viable. I'm, I'm sitting in our first commercial factory right now and uh, we're, we're pumping out material by the time uh, at our Seattle area location. What we're doing uh, after this is that we're looking to uh, build our second US factory and uh, also really be able to, to allow um, this transformation of you know, the electrification of everything to, to really uh, take on some serious speed with, with all global EVs. Right. Now, in your press release, you mentioned uh, that uh, the OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers, the big automakers, are turning to lithium silicon uh, technologies. Can you, can you let us in on which uh, of those, uh, which OEMs are beginning to transition? Well, I think the one I can definitely say is Porsche. <laughs> uh, our other uh, partners and customers um, I'm, I'd prefer to, to, to let them roll out their own announcements, but we are working with nearly all the major players in the EV space right now. And I, and I think the reason that we're seeing that is because we, we are able to commercialize something that is just transformational to what they're able to offer in it for their EVs. 
whether that's density, which means what they can do with the pack, or you know, eradicating charge anxiety because we're able to really, really uh, increase the, the capabilities of fast charging through through lithium silicon. Well, please, please explain how that works because that is one of the biggest bugaboos I see on EV uh, uh, discussion groups is, is fast charging. Uh, so please explain how your technology would facilitate, I assume, higher rates of, of charging and, and more safely? Well, the, the way our, our partners are able to utilize uh, the silicon carbon composite for their lithium silicon batteries um, has really, they've just been able to push the boundaries in terms of what's, uh, what's possible right now. Uh, whether you're seeing that through a partner that's a battery manufacturer like Ferris's or Stordot that's, uh, that's out of Israel that's just putting out phenomenal data right now with, uh, I believe it was a, a five minute charge for a hundred miles, which is just mind boggling, right? That's, that's, that's just incredible in terms of, of what's going to be available uh, in vehicles very soon. You're, you're talking about something that can charge in the same time that it takes to, to fill a tank of gas. And, and that just, it really changes what we think about we can do and, and what's capable and what's possible with electric vehicles and with mobility in general. Well, we're looking at, uh, in our family, a, a Hyundai uh, Ionic 5, which claims that it can go from, if I remember correctly, uh, fast charge from 10% uh, to 80% in 18 minutes. Uh, would your, how, within that context, how much quicker would your technology charge? Um, well, it depends on how the technology is used by the battery manufacturers. Um, so it's about the cells they deliver. And then also I've, I spent a career in, in the automotive industries ranging from uh, the early days for, for motorcycles to EVs to, to flying vehicles. And when you really think about how you're able to get these, these performance figures that are coming from the OEMs, it's an entire chain of value that's happening from not just the cell, but also the pack design, the battery management system, uh, all of that combines to be able to deliver safely these, you know, these decreasing charge times and these, these, you know, these, these capacities that are, are helping us transition to, to EVs. Um, so uh, you can say that, you know, uh, you know, the Ionic 5 is doing fantastic, but if you're able to take a lithium silicon battery and take that 10 to 90% down to 10 minutes, um, it becomes a, a wildly different prospect when you need to pull over and recharge. Sure, fair enough. And how quickly might we see lithium silicon batteries roll out within the industry? Any, can you give us kind of an over, just a, a guess? Well, for consumer electronics, you're gonna be seeing it later this year. And uh, the, the first uh, electric vehicles will be rolling out uh, sometime in 2023. And then you'll also be seeing um, lithium silicon powered Porsches in 2024. Well, that's, uh, well, we're looking forward to that. I, this is, uh, you know, we're on the, the cusp of buying an EV and we're, you know, like many consumers, uh, we're waiting, should we wait for, for this new, better technology that's coming down the road? But it sounds like yours is going to be here fairly quickly. Uh, it is going to be fairly quickly, but um, that Hyundai is a beautiful car. So I don't really see a reason to to not go ahead and pull the trigger on that and just enjoy it. Well, there you go. That's what I'll tell my wife. Grant, okay. well, look, Grant, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for having me, Mark. It's been a pleasure.